Obsidian has solidified its place as an exceptional personal knowledge management tool. People truly love it as a platform for building a second brain, and its popularity continues to grow each day. We've been working with Obsidian for a long time, and we just love watching it evolve. So, in this video, we decided to make an in-depth review of Obsidian and show you exactly how effective it is for capturing, connecting, and managing your knowledge. To get started with Obsidian, the first thing you'll do is create what's called a vault. A vault is simply a folder on your computer where all your notes and files will be stored locally. When you first launch the application, you're given a few clear options. You can create a brand new empty vault, which is perfect for starting from scratch. Alternatively, if you already have a collection of markdown files, you can select open folder as a vault to bring them into Obsidian. And for those using the paid service, there's an option to open a vault directly from Obsidian Sync, which keeps your notes synchronized across devices. Once your vault is open, you can head into the settings to select your preferred language, which makes the tool accessible right away. Now, let's look at the main screen. On the far left, you'll see a narrow vertical bar called the ribbon. This is your Quick Access Command Center. By default, it contains icons for the quick switcher to jump between notes the graph view for visualizing connections, a button to create a new canvas for mind mapping, and an icon for your daily note, which is great for journaling. You'll also find shortcuts for inserting a template and opening the command palette here, which we'll discuss later. Just to the right of the ribbon is the main left sidebar. At the top, you have three primary tabs. Files, which shows your vault's folder and note structure. Search for finding anything within your notes. And bookmarks, which lets you save important notes or searches for easy access. Below these tabs, you'll find a second smaller navigation bar that helps you manage your files. It has buttons to create a new note or a new folder, an option to change the sorting order of your files, and a handy button to automatically reveal the current file you're working on within the folder structure. Finally, at the very bottom left of the window, you have the vault switcher, which lets you open or manage your different vaults, and the main settings gear icon, where you can configure every aspect of the application. This structured layout shows that Obsidian was very thoughtful, even for the beginners who are just getting started with it, which we really appreciate. Now that we have a feel for the layout, let's talk about the core of Obsidian. Taking notes. The entire system is built on Markdown, which is a simple way to format text using standard characters. For example, to make text bold, you just wrap it in two asterisks, like this. This approach has a significant advantage. Your notes are just plain text files with a .md extension. This means they are not locked into a proprietary format, so you can open and edit them with any text editor, which ensures that your knowledge remains accessible for decades to come. This focus on plain text allows you to concentrate on your ideas, rather than getting distracted by complex formatting menus. Obsidian supports standard markdown for headings, lists, and links, but it also includes extensions for things like tables, task lists with checkboxes, and footnotes, making it versatile enough for almost any kind of writing. This brings us to one of Obsidian's most powerful concepts, Backlinks. In many note-taking apps, you can link from one note to another, but the connection only goes one way. Obsidian makes these connections bidirectional. When you're writing a note and want to link to another one, you just type its name inside double square brackets, like this. When you do this, not only do you create a link to another note, but if you go to that note, Obsidian automatically shows you a link back to the original note. This is managed through the Backlinks pane, which you can find in the sidebar. This pane shows you two things. First are linked mentions, which are all the notes that have a formal link pointing to the note you're currently viewing. Second, and just as useful, are unlinked mentions. This feature scans your entire vault for any text that matches the title of your current note, but hasn't been formally linked yet, 
With a single click, you can turn these unlinked mentions into proper links, which helps you discover connections between ideas you might not have realized were related. If backlinks create the web of knowledge, the graph view is what lets you see it. This feature provides a visual representation of your entire vault, where each note is a circle or node, and each link between notes is a line connecting them. The more links a note has pointing to it, the larger its node appears on the graph, making it easy to spot your most central ideas. There are two types of graphs. The global graph view shows every single note and connection in your vault and gives you a bird's eye view of your entire knowledge base. This is fantastic for seeing how different topics cluster together and identifying which ideas are well-connected versus which are isolated orphan notes. The other type is the local graph, which is much more focused. It shows only the note you're currently working on and the notes that are directly linked to it. You can adjust the depth to see connections that are two, three, or more steps away. This is incredibly useful for exploring the immediate context of an idea without being overwhelmed by the entire vault. The graph isn't just for navigation, it's a diagnostic tool. It helps you understand the structure of your own thinking and reveals where your knowledge is dense and where you have opportunities to build new connections. Obsidian's functionality can be extended significantly through plugins. It ships with a set of core plugins, which are official tools developed by the Obsidian team that you can enable or disable based on your needs. For instance, the Daily Notes plugin is a favorite for journaling. It lets you create a new note for the current date with a single click. Another essential one is Templates, which allows you to create predefined structures for your notes, which helps maintain consistency across your vault. The Canvas plugin gives you an infinite, zoomable space where you can visually organize your notes, images, and links, which makes it perfect for brainstorming or mapping out complex topics. For peace of mind, the File Recovery plugin periodically creates snapshots of your notes, so you can easily restore a file if you accidentally delete it. And the Workspaces plugin lets you save and load different interface layouts. You could have one workspace for writing with a clean, focused view, and another for research, with multiple panes and sidebars open. These built-in tools provide a powerful foundation that you can tailor to your specific workflow. For those who prefer to keep their hands on the keyboard, the command palette is the most efficient way to interact with Obsidian. By pressing Ctrl P on Windows or Command P on Mac OS, you open a simple search bar that gives you access to every single command available in the application. Instead of clicking through menus, you can just type what you want to do, whether it's creating a new note or splitting your screen. The command palette uses fuzzy matching, which means you don't have to type the exact command name. It's a feature that dramatically speeds up your workflow once you get used to it. Now let's have a look at the goods and bads of Obsidian. So, Obsidian has matured into an ideal tool for anyone serious about building a lasting personal knowledge base. If you are a writer, researcher, or lifelong learner, download the free app and start simple with daily notes. Share your experience with us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to get more videos like this.